Hello and a very warm welcome to my YouTube. My name's Chris and this is my tribute to the Polish squadron 317 who lost almost all their aircraft on a mission uh, around about South Devon Bolthead in 1942. It's March the 15th, 1942. 317 Squadron are returning cross-channel and they run into fog and low cloud on the south coast. This is my account and tribute to those brave Polish airmen. I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. We have before us an ordeal of the most grievous kind. We have before us many, many long months of struggle and of suffering. You ask what is our policy? I will say it is to wage war by sea, land and air, with all our might, with all the strength that God can give us. Zamiłowanie lotnictwa miałem od samego początku. Mając 15 lat, zacząłem latać na Szybowca. W 1939 roku wojna została mnie na Politechnice w Lwowie. Zostałem wysłany do Rosji, gdzie spędziłem około dwóch lat. Później na podstawie umowy sikorskiej, majskiej, zwolnili mnie. Zostałem jakby nowe życie. Ktoś krzyknął, że tworzy się Armia Polska. Wstąpiłem do lotnictwa. Płynęliśmy 7 dni do Szkocji. Zrzuciłem swoje łachy rosyjskie i dostałem mundur angielski i byłem włączony do rabu. Przydział dostałem do 317 Dywizjonu Lotniczego który stacjonował w Belgii. Lataliśmy z początkowo na Spitfire'a dziewiątki. Później dostaliśmy szesnastki. Niszczyliśmy tory kolejowe, eskortowanie bombowców na cel, zrzucenie bomb przez dive bomby, co ja bardzo lubiłem. Pewnego razu dostaliśmy bardzo silny ogień nieprzyjacielski. Zamordowałem, że Straciłem innego z moich bocznych. Wracam do mesu Wicerski. Powiedzieli mnie, co ty tu robisz? Ty został zestrzelony. Ja mówię, to nie ja, to mój boczny. Ale wiedziałem, że przetrwam od wojny. Takie zabobone były. Jak ktoś powiedział, że ty zestrzelony, a wrócił z powrotem, to znaczy, że przejdź wojnę. Facing odds of six, eight, ten to one, and dove in, shouting the old hunting cry, Tally Ho! Images of these brave airmen epitomize Britain's defiance in the summer of 1940. These pilots came from across the globe, from New Zealand, Canada, Ireland, the United States, and from the occupied nations of Eastern Europe, Czechoslovakia, and Poland. They came together to defend the last staging point for a future liberation of Europe. The largest foreign contingent to fight in the Battle of Britain were the Polish. Over five devastating weeks, Poland had been crushed by invaders from Germany and the Soviet Union. Tens of thousands of Polish servicemen escaped to France to continue the fight. When Blitzkrieg swept through Western Europe, pilots of the Polish Air Force relished the chance to fight the Germans again. But despite their battle experience, the French were reluctant to let them fly. In September 1939, uh, Poland was rapidly overrun by the German Blitzkrieg. It was nothing really to do with Poland's fighting ability. In fact, their air force was very good. They were very well trained and they took only the best people. The problem was they were using obsolete aircraft and they didn't really stand much of a chance against the modern German fighters such as the, the BF-109 and BF-110. Uh, generally, the modern warfare style the Germans were using just overran the country very quickly and they wouldn't be the last. With the fall of France, thousands of Polish airmen arrived in Britain Tired of defeat, they nicknamed it the Island of Last Hope. The British reaction to 
to the polls was at the time was, was reticent and cautious, I suppose. They'd seen how quickly Poland had been overrun and thought perhaps they weren't really up to the task. And the French had also thought this as well when they, many of them had fled to France to continue the fight. Um, but they'd soon found out how good the Poles actually were. And eventually the British would find out too that they actually had very experienced, very pilots. skilled pilots. Now, if I could uh, set the scene, uh, 317 Polish squadron had taken off from uh, RAF Exeter to embark on a mission over northern France. Then on their return to the UK, they came across heavy fog and low cloud on the south coast. They tried to uh, make for um, RAF Bredanek, but that was also fogged in. So they flew up the coast towards um, RAF Bolt Head, which by this time was also suffering with low cloud and fog uh, and they were all then low on fuel and they needed to land so the uh, squadron leader made an approach onto this runway at uh, RAF Bolt Head and uh, sadly flew straight into the cliffs and uh, was killed. Now if I could read from the operations record book from RAF uh, Bolt Head it, uh, it states here that the um, from the ops room that on the 15th of March 1942, round about 1715, uh, they were advised by um, RF Exeter that a squadron of Spitfires, the 317 squadron in their um, Mark 5B Spitfires, um, were returning uh, and they were low on fuel and they would need to, to fly in and land at uh, Bolt Head to refuel before going back to um, RF Exeter. But um, They'd like the uh, the ground crew had lined up the uh, s south west north east runway as the favoured runway to land on, and they'd put pers persons down, um, both RAF uh, ground crew and army people, at 50 yard intervals down each side of the runway. Now the first uh, Polish aircraft to arrive um, uh, was a. Um, Flying Officer Fraginski, and he landed on the east-west runway, not the one that uh, they lined up the people either side to mark the runway. And then um, so reported that one of the uh, Polish pilots um, flew uh, along the uh, runway at Bolt Head at 20 feet, and the cloud and the fog were so thick that he still couldn't see the ground. And very sadly, then he forced landed over at um, over at uh, Rickham. Um, and it truly was a tragic day and uh, a lot of this uh, was picked up on the radio because there, there was a lot of radio chatter going on they were desperately low on fuel uh, and in desperate trouble and really uh, they all pretty much ended up uh, crash landing either on the airfield or over at um, on the other side at, um, at Rickham The uh, area just here on the left on this flat ground between, uh, this is just east of uh, RF Bolt Head, and uh, between here, which is Rickham, and Prawl, which is just over there in the distance, this this large area of flat ground was where the um, where most of the uh, uh, pilots of 317 Squadron had to force land, as they were just completely out of fuel. Um, uh, the airfield back at Bolt Head was in. Sh and, and shrouded in uh, cloud and fog, so they put down wherever they could. And um, it was this area, just, just around Garum Rock here, and just over towards Prawl. Circling uh, east of Solcombe at the moment, just to give you some idea of, uh, of, the, of the lie of the land. But of course it was covered in fog that day, so it was quite different. However, as well as negative preconceptions, the Polish had other challenges to overcome to fly with fighter command. They did have problems, obviously the language barrier was obviously the main one, but it wasn't such just things like this, it was getting used to modern fighters with retractable undercarriages that went up and down, the ones they'd had were obsolete fighters. On top of that they had the metric system, they had to get used to reading in miles an hour rather than kilometres an hour and also getting used to things such as you push forward to accelerate a British fighter where you pull back on the stick to with the Polish aircraft so it's things like that they had to get used to. But they persevered. 
Equipped with the Hurricanes and Spitfires of the RAF, the Polish had the chance to fight the Germans on equal terms. And despite the challenges they faced, their skill in the air was unquestionable. Of all the Polish airmen that came to Britain, there was a realisation that they might be worth putting them into their own squadrons, in this case 302 and 303. Now, they are formed relatively late into the battle, into August, but from the very start, they're incredibly successful. And in the case of 303 Squadron, they are the most successful Allied squadron during the Battle of the Britain. With the Poles, the way they fight, they get very close to the enemy before they open fire, which is a dangerous thing to do, but it does ensure a kill more often than not. They're driven by something very different from the British in the sense that Britain is not occupied. It may have been attacked, but it's not the same as having your country occupied by an enemy force. So they are very, very keen, as were the Czechs, to bring the battle to the Germans. In August, German attacks intensified. On the 24th, Sergeant Antony Giovatsky claimed five German bombers during three sorties becoming one of only three pilots to achieve the status of ace in a day. The two Polish squadrons 302 and 303 entered service the same month. 302 Squadron excelled in its defence of London in September, accounting for nine aircraft on the 18th of September alone. By the end of the battle, its score had reached 18, plus a further 12 probable kills. The contribution of 303 Squadron has become legend one particular group captain decided to test one of the squadrons just to see what their claims were. He came back from uh, one sortie quite shaken saying, oh yes, they do in fact get what they say they get. 303 Squadron has the highest kill count of any squadron during the battle. Their kill ratio is something in the region of 14 to 1. Their ace pilot is uh, Josef Franciszek, who ironically is not a Pole, he's a Czech, but he prefers to fly with the, the Poles and he becomes the highest scoring pilot of the Battle of Britain with 17 confirmed kills. In total, during the Battle of Britain, 146 Polish pilots served with the RAF across numerous units and the two Polish squadrons. They accounted for more than 200 kills. But such a feat came at a cost. 29 Polish pilots lost their lives during the Battle of Britain, including Josef Franciszka, who was killed in an accident that has never been explained in October 1940. Commander-in-Chief of Fighter Command, Hugh Dowding, who had questioned the skill of the Polish pilots at the start of the battle, summarised their contribution in these words. Had it not been for the magnificent work of the Polish squadrons and their unsurpassed gallantry, I hesitate to say the outcome of the battle would have been the same. The Polish pilots became instant celebrities. The American media saw them as the sort of glamour boys of the Battle of Britain. Yeah, they were very well received here. They Poland had suffered far greater brutality at German hands than even France had. And it showed. The Poles were fighting a different war. They were fighting the Eastern War, a no-holds-barred war. They'd seen Warsaw burn. Their country was occupied. They didn't know what had happened to their relatives. Their relatives might already have been carted off. And whilst the British were out to shoot down aeroplanes, the Poles were out to kill Germans. And whether they were in the aeroplanes or out of them was neither here nor there to them. Well, we were very united. We just hated the, the enemy. And then all we wanted is to, is, to, is to get at him and shoot him. The two pilots, I think a lot of us had more respect for than anybody else were both Poles, Joe Klein and Slagowski. When nobody else would fly, they wanted to. And that middle wallet one day, it was a pea super. The birds were walking. And over came a jerry, and we could hear it above this lot, buzzing the field. We didn't know whether he was going to just buzz off or drop some it. And these two, these two poles were out and hit the cockpit, screaming and shouting at the CO to let him go. No, no, no. And off he went back inside to the ground crew, away, and off they went into this fog. He hadn't gone 10 yards, it disappeared. They got airborne, there were no runways. They knew there were nothing in front of them for at least half a mile, except two hangars, and they were airborne. And they disappeared. The CO was biting lumps out of everything. And then we heard this Jerry come over. I mean, they were most distinctive sound Jerry's. We heard him come over, and immediately behind it, two Spitfires, and they were fi both firing at it. There were bullets everywhere, you know. 
they shot it down. And when they landed, were they in trouble? But that's why we liked them. They were there to do a job, and nothing was going to stop them. The Poles were brilliant. They have I really hope um, you found this uh, short uh, tribute to the uh, Polish airmen of some interest. I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I wish you all the very best. Take this greatest of care, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers for now.